from me. And because you've turned from me, there is consequence for your sin. And I know we've talked about that for the last few days, but let's talk about what Paul is saying in Romans. In a nutshell, what he is saying is God has given us grace of redemption because it is not saying that the law is wrong. It is saying that if we hold ourselves hostage to the law and don't acknowledge the redemption of Jesus Christ, don't acknowledge his grace, don't acknowledge his goodness, then we will be stuck in a place of our consequence of our sin. We will feel like that that is it. If the Bible says, you know, let's talk about eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. If the Bible says, then that is our consequence, then we just settle and live with the consequence and the condemnation of the thing that happened to us through sin. But what Paul is saying to us here is that even if you are found guilty because of this law, because of the scripture, because of you transgressing against God and what he has um, said in his word that we should do, that Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, through his grace, he does just not leave the law as our final judge. He does not just leave the law as a stopping place that we're done. It says if we did this sin and this is our consequence and that's it. But what Paul is saying is that we're not bound to to um, the consequence of the law because outside of that consequence, there is also grace that comes in Jesus Christ. And that's what I came to encourage somebody with this morning. Now, if we were to jump back to the book of Hosea, even though um, the, the prophet Hosea, he came to um, the people of God. He talks about Ephraim. He talks about the different um, cities, the crimes that Samaria had um, revealed. He talks about the people of Israel and the different things that they had done. But if we see here, even though the most of that passage of scripture is talking about the judgment of God, it's talking about the wrath of God that is going to fall on the people. But if we look down through here, it is still saying at the end of the day, what the people have done is not too much for God to receive them back to their to his own. It is not so much that God does not desire to bless them, that God does not desire to pull them back into the fold and to have them belong to him. That's the kind of God that we serve. So I just want to come to encourage somebody this morning and let you know that where you are, because let's go back to the beginning of this. Remember, we're talking about Hosea, the prophet who married a prostitute, a prophet who married a harlot. Most men wouldn't even dare. And then and even if they did marry a woman, if she went out and became a harlot after the fact and gave herself over to another man, it would be over for them. But God says, go back and love your wife again. Take her back. He was letting him know there is nothing that your wife has done that is so great of a sin that you can't take her back. You love her again. You buy her back and you redeem her. That is what he is. That is what Paul is saying in the book of Romans, that there is nothing that you have done that even though the law saying that this should be your consequence, even though you may have been a physical harlot, even though you may have been a spiritual harlot, and the law is saying to you that this is to be um, what your consequence is, but through Jesus Christ, Jesus is saying, baby, it does not matter what you've done, it doesn't matter how many men you've laid with, it does not matter how many lies you told, it does not matter how you have transgressed against me, but the, the consequence of the law does not have to be your destiny. The consequence of the law does not have to be your resting place because I am God and I still love you. I still want you for me. All you got to do is turn and repent. If we look down in Hosea, and it talks about the people. It says, whoa, because they've destroyed from me, destruction to them. But then it turns right around in the next passage and says, but I long to redeem them. Our God is longing for us. He's standing right there waiting for us to turn our hearts back to him so that he can redeem us, so that he can redeem us from sin, so that he can redeem us from the curse of the law, so that he can give us another chance and another opportunity to make it right, so that he can and give us another chance to be fruitful, be successful, have a successful home, have a successful marriage, have a successful ministry, have whatever it is that he ordained for us. So even though we find ourselves guilty according to the law, even though we find ourselves guilty according to um, the things that God has spoken and said, God is saying to us, 
I still love you. I still want you for myself. And I am now standing here with my arms open, giving you another opportunity to make it right. Giving you another opportunity. I don't know who it is that may be beating up on themselves. Hmm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Maybe you've done something that you feel like is unforgivable. Maybe you've done something that you said it's better for me to just go on about my business and, and, and just um, isolate myself from any and everything that I know. That's a lot of times why people will start over in new cities and relocate themselves. They're like, I just need a fresh start. But really their fresh start is running, running from the environments that they were in, running from their sin, running from the things that they have done wrong because they feel like um, the people that are around me, they know me and I've done so much wrong. I've done so much hurt. It's just easier for me to remove myself from the equation. Now, if that is where God is calling you, if that is what God is saying to you, then that's one thing. But sometimes, thank you, Holy Ghost, our shame and um, us feeling like we are grasshoppers in the eyesight of the enemy is what causes us to move out of God's timing and move out of God's plan for our lives. Because we can't fathom that God would still want us. We can't fathom that if the transgression was not just against God, but it was against our family or one of our loved ones, we can't fathom that they would love us enough to take us back. So we decide to run. But just like the love of God is evident and, and will come directly to you, don't you know, again, hallelujah, I don't know who this is for, but don't you know that if you've had a, a fight with your sister, a fight with your brother, a family member, I'll tell you this story. Y'all might think this is crazy. And you know what? God uses, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. God uses things that don't even make sense to us to show us the strength that we have in him. Sometimes we feel like the things that we have done are unforgivable. But God is saying today, not only do I forgive you, but the people that you have hurt, the people that you have transgressed, I am going to give them a softened heart. I am going to tear down their stony heart and I will allow them to love and to receive you again and to forgive you. I want to say, don't run, don't run, don't you allow your to be bound by the law so much that it makes you guilty that you ostracize yourself and don't give yourself a chance but my sisters and my brothers if you would just pray if you would just humble and submit yourself to God then God will give you um, forgiveness and not just in his eyesight but in the people that's around you maybe you messed up on your job and you feel like I may as well because sometimes we fire ourselves and you feel like I may as well go in here and clean out my desk because I stole whatever it was and I know these people are going to get rid of me. But then God lays it on somebody's heart and say, you know what? At the end of the day, Shantae may have messed up, but we can't remember how great she was before then. So we're going to show her mercy. We're going to give her a plan. What am I saying? Don't you give up before you see how God is going to move on your behalf. Because when you repent, when you give it over to him, and when you say, God, that I'm sorry, you don't know how God is working on your behalf to allow people to show you mercy. It says it here. We're getting ready to pray, but it says it here. It says, I long to redeem them. I'm just waiting for my people to cry out to me. I'm just waiting for my people to turn back to me because I want to redeem them. Y'all, there's nothing that you have done that God is not sitting back waiting saying, I just want to redeem you. Son, give it over to me. Daughter, give it over to me. I just want to redeem you. And when I redeem you, you're going to be redeemed all across the board. I'm going to wipe your slate clean. Have you ever been in a situation? Come on, y'all. We're getting ready to pray in one minute. But have you ever been in a situation where you thought or you felt like this person going to hate my guts? <laughs> <laughs> I know I have. I have avoided people. I've avoided going to places that I knew they were going to be. I've avoided calling them. I've avoided um, different things because I said to myself, from what I've done, this person is going to hate me. So I've already judged myself according to the law. I have already condemned myself and I have already fixed what the outcome is going to be. And then you happen to run into that person. And instead of them treating you cold, they stop and look at you and they say, hey, Angela, it's so good to see you. And right then it causes something to build on the 
the inside of you because you understand all that time that you have been feeling guilty, all that time you've been feeling like this person is going to hate me, this person is, is still mad at me. But then they turn around and they show you love. That's the kind of God that we serve. God's not mad at you. God's not mad at you. <coughs> he still loves you. And he wants to call you back into himself. It does not matter what you've done. Repent. Repent right now. Ask God to forgive you and watch God begin to move and work and bring everything back together in your life. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for your word. God, we